In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Shape Builder tool, how to use it, and how we can use it to slice up raster images. So to get started, I'm going to need a few shapes for us to work with. But first, I'm just going to click down on my mouse wheel, and I'm just going to drag the page out of the way. So to demonstrate the Shape Builder tool, we're going to need some shapes to work with. I'm just going to come up and create some shapes using the Rectangle tool. I'm going to drag out three overlapping rectangles. I'm going to come up, get the selection tool. I'm going to drag a box over to select them all. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate them. And I'm going to drag our duplicates over to one side. So when we're using the Shape Builder tool, we need to select all of the shapes that we want to use the Shape Builder tool on. So if I want to use these three rectangles, I need to drag a box over the top, select them all and then we can come up to the Shape Builder tool. So the default mode is Add. So if we look at the top in the tool control bar, we've got two different modes. We've got the Add mode and we've got the Delete mode. The other buttons here that are important is we've got the under Finish, we've got an Accept button. So when we've finished combining our different elements of our shapes, we can use the Accept button to accept it, or we can cancel using the Cancel button. The other two buttons we'll have a look at in a moment. So with it in add mode, in add mode, we can select different sections that we want to include. If we click and release, it creates a single path. So if we clicked and released on these, these sections, these would be separate paths when we finalize our shapes. If we wanted to combine different areas, we can drag across and combine different shapes. If I accidentally go too far, to undo, you want to press Control Z. It's important to use Control Z because Control Z will just take you back one step within the Shape Builder tool. If you use either the undo arrow at the top or you go into the edit menu and use the undo button, um, it will take you out of the Shape Builder tool and it will undo the last operation that was carried out before you went into the Shape Builder tool. Just to demonstrate, let's say I join those together by accident. I want to undo, so I'm just going to come up to the top, use the undo button. So it's undone the duplication of these, these three shapes. So I'm just quickly going to drag over the top of those again, press Control D to duplicate them, drag off my other section, and we can go back in. So I'm going to click off, select these three shapes, and go back in to the Shape Builder tool. So in the Add mode, we can join sections together, or we can click and release and we can create our shapes that way. So with the delete mode, we come back into the Shape Builder tool. With the delete mode, if we change over to delete mode, we can delete different sections. And if we now click on accept, it doesn't delete anything that we haven't highlighted blue, but what it does do is split everything up into the individual sections. If we use them in combination, if we start adding sections together, we might delete a couple of sections here. We swap to the add mode. We combine a couple of sections. Now anything that isn't added will be deleted. So it'll only be the blue highlighted sections that remain once we finalize our operation. So we can finalize the operation by clicking on the tick like we have been doing, or we could just press the enter key. So if I just back step, you may be thinking, why do you want the delete button? when things are deleted anyway. One possible reason is if you've got two shapes that you want to combine, but there's a shape in the middle that you don't want, by using the delete tool, you can get rid of it and make life a lot easier. So there is another way that we can go to delete mode. If we go back to the add mode, we hold down shift, it will change us to delete mode temporarily. We can click on that to delete it, and then we're back to the add mode if we release a shift button and we can add two shapes together. And then, of course, we can combine other shapes and we can come up, finalize. Because, let's click off, because we dragged across these two shapes here, it's combined them into one composite path. So I think we've looked at all the different ways that we can use the Shape Builder tool to create shapes. Another thing we can do with it is use it to chop up uh, raster images like photos. This is a new feature that's been added in Inkscape 1.4. So if I come up to the top, I'm going to import image. So I go to import and I'm going to select the image that I want. I'm going to press OK 
to embed the image. So now we've got our raster image. We can actually chop it up into sections so we can come back, get our shape. I think this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the fill color. So I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to left click on the cross at the bottom to remove the fill color. Perhaps I'll turn the stroke color red to make it a little bit more visible. So I'm going to click on my mouse wheel on a particular color and that will um, turn the stroke red. So again, we can select multiple areas and we can get our selection tool and we can select all of them together, including the background photo. And we can come into our shape builder tool. And now we can select the sections that we want from our photo. So I might want this one, this one, and this one. And then we can click on the tick and we've got, we click off to deselect them. We've got the different sections of our photo that we wanted to be included. And one nice thing about using the Shape Builder tool to chop up images is that it creates the copies using clones, so it's not so expensive on the memory. So when we use the Shape Builder tool with its default settings, when we cut out a section of the image, the rest of the image disappears, and so does the path that we use to define it. If you wanted to keep the path and keep a copy of the original image, then there is an option for this. If we select our path and the image, and come back up to our Shape Builder tool. So at the top, we've got the two other buttons. So the first button, the eyeball, allows us to adjust the transparency of the gray fill color. The other button, if we hover over it for a moment, is replace objects. So this one removes everything but the sections of the image that we've chopped out. So if we toggle this off, what will happen is we keep the original image and we keep the original path. But in addition to that, we'll have the area that we've cut out. So this time, if we come down, we can select the area that we want to cut out. We can come up, we can click on the tick, and it appears that nothing's happened. But what's actually happened is we've cut out the shape, but we've also kept the original image and we've kept the path. So if we get hold of the original image and move it off to the side, we can see that we've got the chopped out section remaining. So we can either take the section of photo on its own or I'm going to press Control Z just to pop it back. If I drag a box over both of them, we could come up and group these two together so they move as one. So in this example, you might want to use the original image as the main image and just have a zoomed in section, the arch. One last thing that I just wanted to show you is that we can't use the Shape Builder tool to cut out a section on a cloned image. So if we come up and select our main image, I'm just kind of come up to the top and we've got duplicate. So we use the duplicate to make a, a copy in its own right. Then we select it again, but this time we make a cloned copy. So we click on clone. So I've just added an ellipse to each of the images so that we can cut out a section of the image using the Shape Builder tool. I'm going to highlight all of them by dragging a box over all of them. So we've got both the image selected and we've got the path selected. And if we come up to our Shape Builder tool, I've got the Replace Objects button toggled on. So we can just go down now and we can select the areas that we want to keep. I want to cut out that one, that one, and that one. If we now come back up, click on the tick to accept it, we can see that the original image cuts it out properly. The duplicated image, which makes a, a second copy of the image. Um, this also works, but when we get to the clone, it just cuts out a black ellipse with a fill unset. So if you want to make a copy of an image to cut up using the Shape Builder tool, you need to make a duplicate rather than a clone. So I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.